Welcome to Right on the Money, the weekly talk show with interviews you can use to help you maximize your money and optimize your financial future. Before moving forward with any of the ideas discussed on the show, always consult your financial advisor, insurance professional, or tax consultant. Looking for financial help or a second opinion? We can help you in your search. And now, your host of Right on the Money, syndicated financial columnist and money color commentator, Steve Savant. In this segment, we're talking to retirement specialist Kevin Smith. Welcome to the show, Kevin. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate it. Kevin, you're one of the few guys I talk to that actually we are compadres when we're talking about the number one risk in retirement. I mean, it is so bad out there right now. And I have to say, I've titled the topic of our segment, The Ever-Present Danger During Distributions in Retirement. And the top of the list of the bad boy issues is sequence of returns. Now, you and I are scholars. We've been around for years and years talking about this. Well, let's talk about the sequence of returns on a consumer level for our audience. Sure. What is the danger of sequ What is it, and why is it so dangerous? Sure. It's. I just want to mention first that it's, in my opinion, it's a very neglected topic with a lot of advisors. Um, when I'm meeting with clients, I don't. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't. It's not something that they're aware of. It's. It's really uh, not talked about. It's not planned for. And in my seminars and workshops, I tell people that this is uh, one of the key takeaways, regardless of what the main mm -hmm. topic is. And how it works is I'll, I'll show um, the audience that just two couples, mm -hmm. um, two couples, just one variation, everything else is the same. And when I say everything else is the same, uh, people in retirement that have um, uh, same starting balance, mm -hmm. uh, same average rate of return over retirement, uh, same withdrawal rate, and the only variation or variable is the order of the returns. Mm -hmm. And um, the couple on the left that I show uh, has uh, good, have positive returns early on. They luck out, and so their money lasts all throughout retirement, whereas the couple on the right have poor returns early. Mm -hmm. And they run out of money uh, halfway through. So uh, I, I tell them what's the most important factor uh, when you're saving and accumulating money and the obvious answer is uh, during your working years is um, uh, average rates of return, right? That's pretty obvious. Mm -hmm. But then when you retire, that average rate of return takes a back seat to the order of returns because mm -hmm. bad returns early on can really have a de devastating effect on the retirement. Plan. I was looking at the lost decade from 2001 to 2010. We had four big bad years. I oh, mean, yeah. they were bad. If I started my retirement, if I'm hearing you correctly, if I started my retirement at 2000 and I had three successive bad years, I'm talking major negative years. And then just about the time I was getting a little breathing, I got a 2008 event. How devastating is that in your idea of the bad sequence of returns? It's terrible for a portfolio because once you pull that money out, uh, sell your positions mm -hmm. and and, and take money out for income, you've compounded that loss even further. And if you haven't let that money kind of recover from those bad four years or however many years mm -hmm. they were, the money's gone uh, mm -hmm. forever. So it's, it, I mean, that period of time was an awful period of time. And uh, we have to plan for it as mm -hmm. advisors moving forward because there's a lot of volatility naturally. Okay, so when, if I'm talking sequence of returns, we need to be awake to the fact that they're the same rules that apply during accumulation are not the same rules that apply to distributions. Exactly. And that's because you're leaving really your, your money to grow uh, unaltered, whereas that, that's during your working years. Mm -hmm. And then when you start, uh, when you retire and we go into the, uh, I would say, preservation and distribution phase, mm -hmm. you're taking money out of those accounts. And when you have to pull money out, especially if you're doing it on a monthly basis or a yearly basis, if, if you're looking at uh, periods of time when those account values are way down, you're going to have uh, a very difficult time keeping that money or making that money last for you over the course of or the remainder of your lifetime. Well, we were talking earlier uh, when we were uh, together a couple days back. And I told you the story. I live in Scottsdale. Yeah. I got invited to a breakfast by these wonderful ladies. Yep, and did. I was talking to them. And one lady said, Steve, I'm kind of panic stricken now. I'm 78 years old and I have only 70 something thousand left <sighs> of an $800,000 portfolio. 
She had been dutifully taking out what her advisor told her to take out 15 years ago, which by the way, this is another reason why you should have a annual review with your with your oh, advisor. Yeah. I mean, this is a perfect issue. And by the way, this should be a great warning for all succeeding generations. Uh, for the baby boomers, we're trying our best to get to them right now. Oh, yeah. Okay, so she she has 70-something thousand left, and I cannot help her. She's been taking out the same 4% withdrawal rate. Her dividends didn't make that number. Her interest in her bonds didn't make that number. So she was cannibalizing her portfolio principal. Oh, yeah. No, I, I couldn't help her. It was too late. Th- that happened to me as well uh, very recently. And it, it, at that point, when the account balance is dwindled to that mm-hmm. point, and when their income needs are still a fixed amount every month, there's really, it, it's it's kind of like game over at that point. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's very disheartening and sad. But um, the, the best thing that you can do is just plan ahead and, mm-hmm. and manage that and just realize when you're making that transition from your working and accumulating years to mm-hmm. your uh, preservation and distribution years that you need to, to keep in mind and, and stay aware of that, that sequence of returns risk. Okay, now we just mentioned also in sequence of returns is one of the, dang- oh, yeah. the biggest dangers. Not, it's not a small one. It's a, it's a huge one. But now I just mentioned this lady's been taking out 4% which might have been a safe withdrawal rate back in the day. But I think I saw Morningstar or Wall Street Journal. Somebody said it's below three now. Yeah, I, I, I read something similar to that in the Journal of Financial Planning, and it's, it's a little over two and a half, somewhere between two and mm-hmm. a half and three percent, closer to two and a half. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's, that's, that's a huge difference for, for people. And uh, a lot of people, uh, it, it's... It's it's too little, mm-hmm. so you you need to be, you need to be aware of the fact that maybe what what uh, studies or, or research was done in the '90s because I mm-hmm. think that rule really was solidified in the '90s. Um, that was before we had these the, the lost decade that you mm-hmm. mentioned, and those four just uh, horrific years in the market, and that's that. It, it concerns me because there are still some publications that use that as a rule of thumb. And and I think when you and I were talking mm-hmm. the other day, you mentioned that as well, that you've seen that. Mm-hmm. Uh, really want to really wanna err more on the side of caution mm-hmm. and, and go to that lower number, which is uh, between 25 and 3%, rather than the, the 4% that came about in the 90s. Yes, I'm very surprised there's still publications pushing the 4%. I think it is overstated. I don't see how you, the math and science proves it out. Now, safe withdrawal rate, okay, we have to, we're going to have to settle for a different number. Now, yep. people that are already in retirement that are making this adjustment, this is going to be painful. Oh, yeah. You know, lifestyle changes are going to happen. For people that aren't retired yet, this is your first warning on the timeline. You need to start thinking about volatile markets after you retire. Now, the and risk, even leading up to it. Oh yeah, even leading five up. Five years to it. before as well. I notice they call that. I think Prudential calls it the retirement red zone. Five yep. years before retirement. Yeah. Five years after. The right. is the danger zone. Those five years either side. I want to talk about this one thing though. You know that's bad enough. Now we're talking about. The number one risk in retirement, which now is now a, not only a risk, but it's the risk multiplier of everything, like sequence of, re, uh, uh, of returns, like safe withdrawal rate, and that is longevity, living too yes. long. Yes, um, life expectancies for uh, medical reasons and medical technology have been increasing. And I, I think for, for females, single, uh, rounded up, it's right around 87. Um, yeah. For males, 89 rounded up. Um, uh, married female, 93. So. We're looking at 25, 30, uh, depending on when someone retires, 25, Mm -hmm. 30-year retirements. And in that piece that I I show uh, at the seminars and workshops that I do, I show that 30-year period. And and that just means that you need to make your money last longer for Mm -hmm. you. And it it all kind of dovetails back to what we started the conversation with, is if you're starting off poorly early on, it's going to be really hard to make your money mm-hmm. last for you over a 25, uh, 30 plus year retirement period. Well, you think if the sequence of returns is a major risk in retirement, yep. and now I'm going to exacerbate that risk by saying, oh, by the way, you might have another 10 years to go here beyond what you thought originally. That could be a huge issue. Living to 95 and 100 for the Gen X and Y and millennial is going to be a real thing. 
Remember, if you're listening to our show on radio, iTunes, or a podcast, you can view the video version online at rightonthemoneyshow.com and request information right from this segment. In our next segment, we're going to talk to another top retirement specialist in our series on retirement advice. We'll be right back, right after the break. For more information on this week's money topics, just go to our website at www.rightonthemoneyshow.com and follow Steve's daily postings on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. When it comes to retirement, money management, small business, insurance coverage, college funding, or budgeting, we have the interviews you can use. 